Lego 2K drivers made its way onto the Switch, and against my better judgement I splurged on the outrageously priced special edition for early access, with reservations about the looming of presents and microtransactions, couldn't resist the chance to dive into this experience and provide you all with a breakdown of what it contains. My name's Alex, so this is Switch Corner, and today we'll be diving into the game's story, graphics, gameplay, audio, performance, and of course the dreaded microtransactions. If you do enjoy the content today then consider subscribing, it helps out the channel a huge amount. The story in LEGO 2K Drive follows a familiar pattern as expected from the LEGO franchise. It's light-hearted and it serves as a backdrop for the game's comedic elements which LEGO games are now known for. In this racing themed adventure though we assume the role of a character aiming to join a racing team and compete for the Sky Trophy. Now as we do progress we encounter a diverse cast of rivals in various locations. While the humour is present, it leans more toward a younger audience, and it may not have the same level of universal appeal as some of the other LEGO titles out there. However, the characters remain likeable, and they showcase the signature outlandish designs that LEGO is famous for. The gameplay in LEGO 2K Drive offers a fairly standard experience, but the main attraction for many players will be the game's story mode. In this mode, we progress through the game world, earning victories that unlock access to four different cups to compete in. Now, if you focus solely on the core races, you can expect to complete the story mode in right around five hours. However, the game artificially extends playtime here through character leveling and progression gating, which requires reaching certain milestones before advancing, and at points this definitely became frustrating. Rating. In addition to the main races as well, a LEGO 2K Drive offers a variety of challenges, side quests and minigames that are all available within the expansive open world. The exploration aspect of the game is likely to captivate many players, providing ample distractions and opportunities for extended playtime. Some reports in fact suggest that engaging with all of the available content in the game's story mode, it can extend the overall gameplay experience to over 20 hours. While the core racing mechanics then remain consistent throughout the game, there is a unique twist here with the ability to control a transforming vehicle that can operate on different terrains such as roads, dirt and even water. That means that players will always have three vehicles at their disposal which can be rotated as more additions are unlocked. These additional vehicles are often rewarded for completing races and quests within the game. The vehicles here then are not only pre-built but can also be modified with various perks such as speed boost and increased health. Moreover, players can build their own vehicles using an in-game building tool that offers over 1000 different pieces. Each vehicle comes with 5 distinct stats and that's top speed, acceleration, handling, health and weight. Understanding these stats and choosing the right cars, it will be crucial for achieving success in the game. In terms of difficulty, the story mode doesn't really offer specific options, but there is a feature called a race difficulty assist. This adaptive system adjusts the difficulty based on the player's performance, aiming to make the game suitable for players of all skill levels. However, some may find the game leans a little bit towards being too easy. We also gradually advance our class, which plays a factor too. Now, one aspect of the game that may divide opinions is the significant presence of rubber banding. Throughout the races, it feels like the game artificially adjusts the speed of opponents ahead of you, slowing them down, while also accelerating those behind. While this initially creates a sense of tension, some players may find it detracts from the, I guess, fairness of the racing experience. My favourite aspect of the racing though must be the controls, we can make tight turns by pressing Y, we can use our brakes when needed, we can even perform a drift by combining a direction with that brake button. Drifting not only adds a fun element to the gameplay but it also builds up a boost meter at the bottom of the screen, this becomes crucial for maintaining a competitive edge. Additionally the game introduces a unique mechanic where crashing into objects actually helps rebuild our vehicle's health, aligning perfectly with the LEGO brand. This mechanic as well also rewards boost. The track variety in the game is another standout feature as well, each location brings something new to the table and it will surprise the player with unexpected twists and turns. Along the tracks we do encounter a diverse range of weapons including boosts, ghost mode, missiles, rocket barrages and more. While these weapons may be familiar to fans of kart racing games, they remain enjoyable and they fit well within the experience. It's kind of a case here of if it ain't broke don't fix it in my opinion and that is probably the way I would have went. So that's the story mode at a high level, expect to uncover mini games that I found particularly weak like saving pedestrians from zombies and aliens, they just kind of repeat too often. Also they feel way too slow compared to the core racing, there's also the ability to fly momentarily which is actually quite good fun honestly. And then some challenges which do work well, I think getting the longest jump though 
they're rarely ever really skill based, rather it is, have you found a car powerful enough to reach the different markers? Alongside story mode then, we can compete online, though the Switch build lacks crossplay on like all other platforms. We can play locally then, and we can compete in set cups and take on different quick races. Problems wise, before we do get to the microtransactions, and firstly, I wish there was an opportunity to explore here on foot, as it would have added another layer of immersion to that gameplay. As I said as well, then the minigames definitely lack variety, but you can access them from the main menu if you do want to. Furthermore, the game map can be overwhelming at times, even with the built-in filters. On a positive note, however, around the map, fast travel options are available. That definitely helped ease navigation in the game world. Lastly, understanding how the vehicle stats impact performance could be clearer, as it can be somewhat difficult to grasp their specific effects. Performance-wise for the game, I would consider it okay. It tends to fluctuate between 30 and 40 frames per second, but I think I would have preferred here a locked 30. The game's level of destruction, however, means it is impressive they managed to get it to where it is, in my opinion, but you will feel those fluctuations frequently, and occasionally I did notice some more dramatic drops and stutters. Monetization is an aspect of LEGO 2K Drive that I find quite concerning. The game seems to be heavily geared towards a younger audience, but it's filled with numerous opportunities for real-world cash spending. When you first start the game, you're required to sign up for a 2K account to access the online portion. That is also a feature I've never been particularly fond of. While it's possible to earn in-game currency through gameplay then, it is a slow and tedious process. Throughout the entire story mode, I only managed to accumulate enough in-game cash to purchase one single vehicle. The game actually features as well a rotating selection of items in the store with daily, weekly and monthly drops anticipated. While microtransactions are acceptable in free-to-play games, feels quite greedy when a game at a AAA price point incorporates such a heavy emphasis on spending additional money. For example, each vehicle in the store costs about $5 of your regional equivalent, and there are also stickers, characters, car parts available for purchase as well, and that's just kind of the, the very beginning. This raises concerns, so especially in the context of online and multiplayer, as some of these cars have significantly better stats than the ones I obtained through standard gameplay. It can create a pay-to-win dynamic that can be frustrating for players who aren't willing to spend additional money or invest in excessive time grinding. Additionally, who's to say next week they won't just introduce a new car that's even more overpowered, and now you're going to be pulling out that credit card again. In summary, the monetization approach in LEGO 2K Drive leaves much to be desired. While microtransactions may have a place in certain games, their implementation in this title feels excessive, especially considering its target audience. These vehicles especially, they should not have been attached to stats, it should simply be a cosmetic, you know, car shell. I would caution parents though, to be aware of the game's monetization elements, because if you do log into this game, it is not shy about pushing them on you. Visually it's okay, the game has the expected stop motion Lego style and the cutscenes of course look fantastic. Particular fan of the brief animations that introduce each of our rivals, it adds a dash of kind of individual personality. When it comes to in race however, it is clear they've had to scale back the experience quite a bit for the Switch hardware. When you look at different builds on other systems, environmental effects are dramatically different and the world feels somewhat emptier. Clearly however, this was a compromise for performance, so it does make sense. When it comes to the world and the tracks, then the variety is impressive again, but you're going to see a considerable amount of popping. I noted track markers appearing consistently throughout my time with the game. It also seems this is working with a favorable resolution as well, because pixelation would occasionally be heavily apparent. It's not a bad looking game by any means, but it's definitely pushing the system. And this is no doubt in large part due to the destructible nature of the world, but that is essential for this experience. So I can see why they went to such great lengths to achieve it. Finally, the audio is solid. It's packed full of music that I wouldn't describe as particularly memorable, but it is in keeping with each location, adds an extra layer of personality. Additionally, voice acting from many of the cast members is top quality, and I love the little destruction, transformation, and general vehicle sounds. Overall, a LEGO 2K Drive is a game that showcases the potential of the LEGO license, but unfortunately, it also reeks of greed. From the moment you start the game, it aggressively pushes you towards online features and the in-game store, and that can definitely be off-putting. The single-player experience is enjoyable, but it heavily relies on, I guess, your completionist tendencies to fully appreciate it. And the real appeal here should have been the online play, but the lack of cross-play support, it often results on the Switch in empty lobbies. 
Moreover, the game's monetization practices are just a cause for concern. While the current differences in vehicle stats might not be, let's say, significant, there's always the potential for future updates to introduce more significant advantages for those willing to spend real money. This is disappointing as cosmetic customization options only would have been a more acceptable approach. In all honesty, considering the presence of games like Mario Kart on the Switch, it's hard to justify investing in a LEGO 2K Drive. However, I want to be fair at the same time, and I must admit, I did have fun with the racing itself and that single player story. It's just an entertaining experience, so today, I'm going to be calling it slightly above average, that is a 6 out of 10. I would basically recommend keeping an eye on the game, but personally, I'd suggest wait for a sale, especially if you're primarily interested in that single player content, because at its current state of the experience, it just doesn't justify that fall of price tag. So will you be checking out LEGO 2K Drive then? Let me know in the comments. Also with that, do you think I've been fair today as well? This was definitely a tough game to talk to, but it was also tough to, you know, put a score to. Then hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone. <laughs>